started? So you're he can come. Interview. <laughs> when I was in the Sith I lived in Chicago. And those that might have heard of Rabbi Silverberg. So he used to give once a week. And you only go in the Shiach share. And he used to discuss different concepts and through sources. So there's, I can't say I remember any of them, but one. Because it's the one that I've been telling people when people ask me to talk, what about the Shiach? So there's an argument between Rambam and Ramban whether there's going to be big miracles when the Shiach comes or the world's going to be the same. Boys! You know, some of us... <laughs> some of us might have heard that there would be crazy things growing on trees and the world would be peaceful and so many different miracles that people have heard that will happen when the Shiach comes. But yet, the other one holds that no, Mashiach, the world's going to stay the same, Mashiach's just going to be or whatever Mashiach is or the situation's going to be. So how could it be that they can argue on such differences? When seemingly there's one concept of Mashiach and what is going to happen. So then he went on to explain that really they're not arguing. They're really saying the same thing. How? If you were to take someone from the 1800s and you were to take them to an airport and show them a 747, if you were to explain it to them in detail what this airplane is, there's a good chance they'll feel faint. They wouldn't be able to handle what is this thing. It could fly places. The second option is that probably the guy will come with his horse and wagon, look at the thing and scratch his nose or something and continue walking. won't know what hit him. Yet for us, a 747 is something that right now if we wanted to, we could all grab a cab, run to the airport, take it to Australia, no problem. It totally makes sense. It's in our normal day-to-day -day life. This is how he explained the argument of whether it's going to be miracles when Mashiach comes or not. When, Mashiach, when they... When they say that there's going to be crazy miracles when Mashiach comes. Those miracles are relative to what was. What was, to, what will Mashiach be like, will be craziness. Because not necessarily can we comprehend it. But yet when Mashiach will actually come, when it will actually be here, it will be as if it was normal. The miracles will totally make sense. It comes gradually in stages where these things make sense. Totally, it works. Let's go on a plane now. Let's go to Israel. No problem. Hmm. Now, this was something by me that made sense, and it resonated a lot, and it's like, okay, things make sense. But then there was more questions that a couple years later that I had with regards to Mashiach. So many of us, we want Mashiach now, we forbring, and we talk about it, but how many of us actually, when we say, okay, Shalom, I'll see you in Chicago. But if Mashiach doesn't come, how many of us throw those lines in? Like, Mashiach, yeah, Mashiach doesn't come, Mashiach doesn't come, and then we continue on with this lingo. How many of us actually believe in this concept of Mashiach? So I was bothered by it. We want Mashiach now, it's in a place called Wilkesbury, those that know. His rabbi, Mama Shpira, Mendel Zirkin was there. So I was talking to him about it. Some of you might have heard me say this before. So I was asking him, how could it be we ask, we talk, we bring Mashiach, Mashiach. Do we actually, what is Mashiach? How could it actually be here? So he kind of diverted and went to a different place. He asked about, it was right around the time of Yom Kippur, and about asking about Shuba from Hashem. If someone were to slap you once, the first time you think it's a joke, you grab him, you hug him, <laughs> that was funny. The guy slap you a second time, you'd be like, okay, guy, like, I don't like being slapped, I don't know what's wrong with you, I got it. The guy slaps you a third time, you're like, okay, please leave, I'm sorry, I don't like being slapped multiple times through my day, I'd rather continue going whatever I was doing. But yet, three times a day, we tell Hashem, I'm sorry, I screwed up, please forgive me. Shan Magana, whatever it is, more than three times a day, but that's just in Dominic. When does Hashem say, okay, Shalom, I created you, I know you're supposed to do well, you're not quite doing it. You're messing up countless times daily. I appreciate all the work you've done. Goodbye. At what point does he say that? So Mendel Zirkin was saying simply, in our mind, it doesn't make sense. After a guy slaps me a third time, I want to tell him, get the hell away. I have nothing to do with you. That's after the third time. That's in my logic. That's in a human logic. That's in my, how people think after the third time. But God isn't human. And therefore, by God, there's no after three times, four times, ten times, forgiveness, not forgiveness. It's not like that by him. It's totally different. We can't even comprehend what it is like by him. The same logic goes when we daven in a room. Let's just even say in Tiferes. We're davening Shema Nasseri. The whole time we're davening to Hashem, we're saying different things. Then there's that intimate moment called Shema Nasseri. We walk into Shema Nasseri, one-on-one, -on -one, you with Hashem. And it's that really you ask for everything. It's not even that spiritual. You ask for parnasa, for money. You ask for health. You ask that the world should be a better place. Whatever someone can ask for. But yet, how could it be that each person is having an individual moment with God? At the same time, I am. What's going on here? Am I talking to him? Or is Ellie talk Who's talking to him? But yet, that only makes sense if I compare God to a human being. Now, clearly, this world isn't a human, isn't a God, isn't a human place, sorry. People die, things happen, some people get things, evil people 
do well and bad people sometimes suffer. What, what's going on in this world? Well, clearly this isn't up to us. This isn't a world created by human beings. This isn't a world that human beings aren't really in control of, even though we like to feel it's, we're in control of. The same thing goes with sports fans. I'm a huge sports fan. It's always late in the game when you want it to turn around. You have the, you know, cross your fingers, upside down cap. Why is that? So what Zirkin was saying, psychology, human beings like to feel like they're in control. So sometimes when the guy hits the home run because you're crossing your fingers, you feel like there's some, you connecting to some energy that gave him the spark right then, you did it. And if it didn't work, you're like, okay, I have to put on that good luck jersey next time. Because human beings like to feel like they're in the control of the situation. The you know, same thing goes, someone told me, they ever said this, but I think it's like a basic thing. When someone's walking, the one foot that's moving forward is in the air. It doesn't quite know what's going on. There's a moment of hesitation. If you were to actually study officially, there's like, what's going on with that foot? It's in the air. It's floating. It's moving. Where, where am I going? I was just on the ground in a stable situation. Where am I heading to? But yet, it just goes for the ride and lands and phew, and then it goes up again. And, what's going to be in it? Lands again. There's that moment that you're in the situation, you're thrown around. Now, the same thing goes with Mashiach in this world. Because we clearly understand that this world is not a place created by humans, in control of humans, it's clearly out of our reach. But yet, God wanted us to make this world a better place. We know that that's the reason why Chabad does Shluchim, because the Rebbe Tachtainim, you know, as Mepharshad explains, and therefore the Rebbe takes it to a whole new level. We're here to make this world a better place. Well, if this world isn't really controlled by humans, and clearly this world, if we, everybody would be alive and nothing bad would happen, so how could it be that we can actually change this world? If anything, when we say Mashiach is going to come, why is it that we doubt when Mashiach is going to come? At least when Mendes is saying, give this year, and I can agree with it. Because I imagine the world to be a perfect place. Everybody would be best friends. No one would die. Every country would get along. U.S. would win the World Cup. Everything would happen perfectly. That's what would happen when Mashiach is going to come. So therefore, when I say we want Mashiach, now I'm thinking there's no way in hell Mashiach is coming right now, right? He's already won the cup. From Chicago, so I don't know if you want to bring that up. Um, but it, it's how can Mashiach come right now? This world clearly isn't in a perfect place. I personally just don't love everybody. I'm not at that level yet. And this world isn't a perfect place, and there's a lot for everybody to work on. So, how could it be Mashiach going to come now? Eh, come on, is it really going to come now? But that's if it's according to my mind, according to human mind. According to human mind, Mashiach won't come until the world is a perfect place. A perfect place according to my mind, according to my knowledge, according to the understanding of a noble person. But who says it's up to me? Who says it's up to any of us? For all I know, the world should be ten times worse. The world, we should, people should be killing each other, people should be robbing, no one should appreciate Judaism, no one should be religious today. God forbid. That's how the world technically could be. But yet, because of each one of us being here, and each person in the world that lives today, doing their small thing, this person getting married and having kids, Presidents doing their things, humans doing their things. For all the world is better than what God. He's sitting there like, wow. I thought people would be eating each other alive, and here the world is just going forward. Small little problems here and there, but those problems are nothing compared to what should be and could be. Maybe the smallest thing, helping out a friend, that could change it all because it's not up to me. And that thing that doesn't make sense, who says it's supposed to make sense? Clearly, the world isn't something that makes sense. So maybe she could come right now. And the thing that really knocked it out of the ballpark for me is the fact that I'm a sports fan, and this example for me did it a little bit. When you think of a sports game, and there's the beginning and then there's the end, and there's a lot of details in the middle. Now, you can't say that one shot at the end of the game won it. That one goal that made it 3 2 won the game. What happened to the 2 2 goal, and the 2 1 goal, and the 1 0 goal? And what happened to the pass that created the first goal, and the tackle that created the second, and the goalie blocking the third goal? Each person didn't know at that time that that would affect the outcome all the way at the end of the game. There wasn't that one guy that took that one shot at the end that won it. Really, it was just him. What about the training that took beforehand, the coaching that gave the guys the pregame talk? Who knows what part involved? And when someone's in the game, they don't think right now this moment when they score the second goal, the final goal score is going to be 3-2. I score the second goal. Therefore, there's one more goal, and that was because of me. No one knows that. The guy did the tackle part of the game, got the yellow card. But I know that wasn't the momentum. No one knows what part within the game really did that. But they don't think about that. They think, right now, we have to win the game. We don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know the final score. And honestly, they don't care. They go out there and they do what they want to do. Because they know at the end of the game, they understand what's going on. Within them, they see that, okay, there's that end result. We need to be there. Or we need to somehow get there. How are we going to get there is by scoring goals. How we do that? Well, figure it out. Game plan when you're down, your adrenaline, or whatever the situation is. But when each small little thing comes together, without them understanding how it comes together, that's how they win the game. And when he was like, talking to Miss, by me it clicked. Now I still fail, and I'm no tzaddik, and I'm no bainani, and anything like that. But at the end of the day, you go in that one time and tell the friend ask for help. 
dollar in your pocket and the guy, the gentleman needs food. Someone pour it, Sadaka. It's hard that dollar. That small thing, we don't know if that's going to, if I know right then, boom, she asks him to come. Because it's not according to our knowledge, it's not according to our logic. When he said that to me, it really clicked his concept of we want Mashiach, no? Wow. Shkoya! Yeah. 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 Yeah.